Hello, everybody. Dr. Shadia Rafich here, board certified surgeon, chief of specialty, and part owner of True Care for Pets in Studio City, Los Angeles, 24 hour multi specialty emergency hospital. Thank you so much for tuning in here. We're going to focus on a topic that I know a lot of pet owners are battling uh, with, with their pets and maybe even with themselves. Obesity, being overweight. And this is a common problem. It's a chronic issue, not only for people, but also for animals. And dogs and cats are subject to eating way too much or having medical conditions that make them predisposed to gaining weight. And every time you go to your veterinarian, they look at your dog's weight and they say, hey, you got to lose X number of pounds. This is how you're going to do it. And you promise your vet you're going to do it. And then you don't. And then you see them again next year for blood work or vaccines or whatever. And they have to remind you again to start the weight loss program. And listen, if you're not doing it for yourself, you're not going to do it for your dog. That's for sure. And we know that just like in people, dogs that are overweight are prone to other diseases. They're more likely to have joint problems like arthritis, spine issues, diabetes, pancreatitis, heart disease, dental disease, all these things and more occur in dogs that are overweight. Lean dogs get diseases too, of course, but if you can eliminate one more factor from your pet's life that makes them predisposed to certain diseases, well then, let's do it. And obesity is certainly one of them. Somewhere between 25 and 40% of dogs in the U.S. are considered obese. With With the higher the higher range there being in the in the West Coast. And somewhere between 30 and 40% of dogs will actually overeat, overeat if they are allowed to. So almost half the dogs won't have any inhibition when you offer them all the food they want. And we have to be careful because really at the end of the day, you as a pet owner is responsible for how much and for what your dog eats. Now, that being said, a lot of the younger clients of mine are much more on the ball with this topic than than the the older clients. They're finding foods that are either home-cooked foods, they're finding foods that are organic or made by specific companies that tailor to those folks that want to know what's going in their dog's diet. And that's great. And it's it's a combination of what's in the food and how much you're giving that is that can be the problem or that can be the solution. So I want to talk about what the majority of veterinarians and clients will try to do, generally speaking, or most commonly, to try and take weight off their pet. And then I'm going to talk to you about more of a novel concept that I devised on my own just by extrapolating from what I know about people who try to lose weight. So classically in dogs, when you're trying to have them lose weight, you think the first thing you think about is I got to feed them less. Less calories means less, less weight gain. And that usually translates to starving them. You end up feeding your dog markedly less than they're used to eating. Now they're trying to eat everything in sight. They're going for the cat food. They're going for the cat poop. They're going for stuff outside, deer poop, rabbit poop, whatever they can find. Um... They're starving because now they're used to, they were used to eating a certain amount of food and now they're feeding them markedly less. And so you feel bad because they're hungry all the time. They hate everything because they're starving and they're miserable. And sure, over time, in a subset of dogs, that will work. They they will lose the weight. But I find that maybe, I don't know, 50% or more, this method fails. It's usually whether it works or not, it's usually a temporary fix because most pet owners can't stand to do it to their dogs. And so they'll, they'll go back to feeding them whatever they were feeding, getting fed before. That's the most common method that folks will utilize to try and have their dogs lose weight. They'll just feed them less. So if you're feeding your dog two cups of, of dry dog food twice a day, now they're getting one or one and a half and progressing from there, depending on whether or not you're monitoring your pet's weight at your veterinary office. There's a second, probably the second most common method of trying to promote weight loss in dogs is by feeding prescription diets. 
So food companies will tailor to this demographic of dogs by offering foods that are more likely to feel, to make your dog feel like they're full without correlating to a high caloric intake. And so these weight loss diets work really well because a lot of the prescription diets have been tested through veterinary studies. Veterinarians like myself are a fan of these diets. They work really well. They help keep the dogs regular and they help, they help with the weight loss without making them feel like they're starving. Here's a downfall to it. There's two. One is you're going to pay more. It's a prescription diet, so it'll be more expensive. You're going to be paying more per month than you would your regular dog food from the pet store or from, from Walmart or Target. And secondly, just like in people, if you're trying to eat healthier, well, guess what happens? The food doesn't taste as good. And it doesn't taste that good for dogs either. They're eating these bland diets. There's, no, there's no, nothing, nothing to them. It fills them up. Sure, it's a means of survival, but they don't enjoy it. Some dogs don't care. They'll eat whatever anyway. So they're eating the bland diets and losing weight. That's fantastic. But for a lot of dogs, they don't like the food. And owners, and you know who you are, you try to cheat, you add some of the dog's old food in with this diet food and think that, well, if I spice it up a little bit, your dog will eat. Well, you're defeating the whole purpose then. You got to feed them the strict diet or else, or else the, whole, the whole point's lost. So you want to stick with a bland diet, a weight loss diet, and not spice it up and not cheat and hope that your dog likes it. And that's probably the second most common method of trying to promote weight loss in dogs by dietary means. First, you try to feed them less, less calories. Second is you try to feed them a diet that's tailored towards weight loss. There's a third option as well. Uh, there was a medication, I haven't used this in a while, but it used to be a, a, a medication that would suppress their, their appetite. General practitioners, your family veterinarian will know more about this than I do, so certainly inquire about it. I don't know what the studies are on it. I don't know how good it is, how effective it is. We used to use it as part of a fat camp in my Long Island hospital, and we did see results. It worked very well when you combine that with a weight loss diet. And so you suppress their appetite, you feed them the diet food, and you hope the combination will help. Again, you'd have to refer to your family veterinarian regarding this, this type of method. I'm not so sure how effective it is, but that's a third option for you. A final option, fourth option that I know of is exercise. So just like in people, you know, if you're gaining weight or you want to lose weight, you go to the gym and go for a run, take classes. Dogs need the same thing. And if you're able to promote some level of activity with your pet, it not only makes them go out for exercise, it also forces you to go out for exercise. So you both can get healthy at the same time. The exercise portion of this regimen kind of depends on what kind of dog you have, where do you live, the weather, do they have any joint problems, spine problems, any other diseases, heart disease that does not allow them to go for distances that will result in weight loss. And these pets also, keep in mind, are not used to exercise. So you wouldn't go to the gym and spend three hours there after you haven't gone for 20 years, right? You would do it gradually. So with your pet, the same sort of gradual incremental increases in activity are required in order to make it enjoyable and safe for them and also enjoyable and safe for you. And this discussion, as you can tell, is focused towards dogs. Cats are sort of a special breed and where they do also get obesity, there are also methods of weight loss for cats, but this is tailored towards dogs. They're not as restricted in their, in their dietary needs as cats are. So we have solutions that include feeding them less. You can give them prescription diets for weight loss. You can give them an appetite deterrent, and you can promote activity. And those are some great methods to try and help. I am not a fan of the first. I'm not a fan of starving your dog to get them to lose weight. I'm a huge fan of the diets with a caveat that I'll go over in a few minutes. I'm not sure if I like the idea of suppressing their appetite. I wouldn't do that to myself to lose weight, so I'm not so sure I would do it to my dog. And the fourth one, exercise, fantastic. If you can figure out a safe regimen with your veterinarian, 
on how you can promote exercise to lose the weight in combination with dietary changes, that's wonderful. Those are my takes on the four most common methods we use to promote weight loss in dogs. Now, here's the caveat, and this is the method that I tell my clients. In people, if you are trying to speed up your metabolism, sort of keeping the fire burning, right? You are trying to give yourself small amounts of food frequently. You're trying to continuously make your body burn the calories the second they enter your body. And you speed up your metabolism by eating small amounts throughout the day, basically grazing, grazing on food. I do that myself. I don't eat one or two big meals. I'll eat a bunch of small meals, five, six, seven small meals throughout the day. And I feel great. I have more energy. I'm happy with my body. It's fantastic. And so what I've done is I basically tailored that thought process to dogs. Instead of taking the two cups a day, the two cups twice a day you're feeding your dog and cutting it in half all of a sudden, Take the same two cups twice a day and divide it into four or five different meals. The same total amount of kibble or can, whatever you're feeding, the same total amount, instead of dishing it out in two different feedings, dish it out in four or five or six feedings. That way your dog is constantly ingesting food so they feel overall, they'll feel full. They're getting the same calories their body's used to, but you're forcing their metabolism to speed up. If you combine that regimen with a healthy lifestyle, which is exercise, I think that if you were to use the a weight loss diet or your normal diet, but in reference to our, our discussion here, a weight loss diet, split it up into multiple small meals and promote exercise, I think you'll find that your dog will be happier with that regimen. You won't feel as guilty for starving them and they'll feel pretty full. They'll be happy. The downfall to this method is probably going to take a little bit longer than starving your dog would. And so I think that it's a more natural way of trying to lose lose weight in your pet. You, You could also argue that if you were to cut down calories or split up the feedings of smaller amounts or whatever you're going to do, if you find that your pet is still hungry, well, I've got solutions for that as well. And keep in mind too, if you're going to partition the food out to smaller amounts, multiple times a day, you've got to have the the lifestyle that allows for that. Not everybody is going to be around to feed their dog four or five meals a day. It's just not realistic. Some clients can. Some clients will get those timed feeders and just have the feeder release a certain amount of food at specific times. So there are ways you can do it if your lifestyle does not tend towards allowing multiple meals a day. But that's what I would do. Now, fillers. There are certain products you can give your dog in between meals. If you view that they're still hungry, depending on the option you elect, you can feed them, make them feel full. You know, things like celery and lettuce work great. They're just water weight, there's some fiber. There's no real calories there. They usually enjoy the crunchy texture and it'll make them feel full. Baby carrots are good too. Um, They do have sugar in them, so that may... They may add to your problem, but baby carrots work really well. They like they like to eat those. Carotene's good in them, and it makes them feel full. It's good fiber. Their poops will come out orange if you feed them too many, so don't freak out. But otherwise, probably something like celery works really well as far as a filler goes. So I hope that this information, especially if it pertains to your pet, is helpful to you. Obesity is a big problem in dogs all across America, and it would certainly not only save you money in the long run with few veterinary bills because of all the diseases they can get from obesity, but it'll also also get your pet to live longer. It's already been shown that dogs live for a number of years longer if they're maintaining a lean body weight. If you can keep your dog lean, active, that translates to overall health, longer lifespan, and uh, you'll, you'll enjoy your pet for longer and they'll be happy. So I hope, I hope this information helps you out. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. This is Dr. Shadia Rafidge. Follow my social media handles. 
Let me know if there are any topics that you would like me to discuss or any questions you'd like answered. I want to thank you again for joining. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you.